All right. Hi, folks. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about uh, lessons tackling performance in uh, or our lessons in ID performance. My name is Pablo Baxter. I work at Square. And this is really more of a story of uh, what we did to go ahead and actually accomplish our uh, the perfor uh, performance gains we, uh, we got from IntelliJ. Um, so today the talk is going to be more so about three problems we ran into while investigating some of these IDE and Gradle issues. Um, really this, I'm waiting for my slides going to come up here. My notes are all gone. Um, so it's three, uh, issues that we went ahead and, uh, dealt with. Um, we went ahead and, uh, looked at these issues and this is more like, you know, we're going to go through how we debug the issues, how we went ahead and, uh, dealt with it. And even some of the fixes we either applied or helped apply through it. So one of the first questions we have is like, why do we care about the IDE? Right? So what is the, like. We're all mobile, uh, we're all developers here, um, but we're not all IDE experts. I consider myself an Android developer, first and foremost. So for me, it's like, okay, we're digging into this IDE, but why should we care about it as developer experience engineers? Um, the reality is that like everybody's focused on CI development, the velocity of uh, development teams and everything, but really our first experience with uh, with uh, as a developer and our experience with it is with the IDE. So if the IDE is causing issues and there's a failure there, um, obviously it's going to go ahead and affect our performance on there. So uh, I'm losing slides. <laughs> um, uh, it's often called the last mile. It's kind of neglected by, I believe, by a lot of different teams just because um, it's not necessarily seen. Uh, it's seen as the last mile. It's possibly uh, neglected by a lot of uh or developer ex uh, experience engineering teams because it's not something that we look at immediately. Uh, last mile, um, I don't think it's neglected by everybody, but I mean, obviously nobody's looking at the ID uh, immediately. Um, so we're trying to go ahead and understand more about the ID at Square. Um, we're trying to figure out how, like, how does it resolve some of these issues? Some of the issues we ran into were more so of like, how do we go ahead and improve on this performance, right? So we ran into a lot of different problems. A lot of the bugs we're looking at just weren't quite there. Um, so we're trying to go ahead and figure like, okay, well, what's the problem? How do we fix it? Why are some of these bug reports that we're seeing not that great or just uh, miscategorized, right? So the biggest lesson we're gonna go ahead and actually impart to all of you here is really not just about like, you know, I'm gonna go through some uh, talks about how we ended up debugging the IDE, but really the lesson here is I wanna go ahead and actually uh, talk more about seeing the improvements from the community to actually dig into the IDE, dig into Gradle, dig into the open source of it, and try to actually fix the issues or at least provide a better uh, bug reporting for them. So that way, when you see like, okay, Gradle daemon memory is uh, being increased or it's uh, going out of control, it's like, well, it might not be Gradle. It could be the Android Gradle plugin. It could be the IDE code because the IDE actually communicates with Gradle in that sense. So... Quick history, this is actually a quick history leading up to our release uh, or the release of Electric EO and how we sort of were a part of that release. Um, uh, quick timeline right here is uh, we started uh, using uh, Gradle and Android Studio as our primary uh, IDE and tool set back in 2019. Um, it, was, it was standardized. We were previously using this, this OK Buck uh, Gradle Mix um, it, it wasn't quite working out, but uh, we modularized all the code back uh, back in 2019. Uh, at that point, we had about 1,200 modules. Uh, Ralph uh, Wondercheck actually went ahead and spoke about this. Uh, he was for me at Square. He gave a great talk about this at DroidCon. Um, if you want, uh, look up his talk on uh, Android at Scale uh, at Square and DroidCon 2019. And he also did a talk here at DP Summit last year as well uh, with regards to some of the work that happened there. Um, I believe that talk was called Isolated Development for reference. Uh, so everything was going fine, right? So everything's going great in, uh, in up to, to December 2020. And then we started seeing some uh, ID performance issues come up. Uh, it seems to worsen as we started adding more and more modules. Our module count actually increased from 1,200 to uh, almost 3,500 by uh, December 2020. And keep in mind, this is only on the... Android uh, mono repository that we have. We have other mono repositories, but for our Android specific mono repository, it went from 1200 to 3500. Uh, and we were using internal metrics to go ahead and just check on the sync times for that. And that's how we started seeing that, hey, like um, our sync times were actually doubling more and more, or doubling every, every uh, as we started adding more, all these modules. Um, 
And it was during this time too, back in uh, December 2020, that Google, IntelliJ, and Gradle started prioritizing uh, improving on these same times for Android Studio. So July 2021, Arctic Fox is released, and we're still dealing with these long sync times. Now we're sitting at about 4,000 modules, and we're still dealing with a lot of different uh, problems there. So uh, going into the future a little more, uh, July 2022, this is all before I actually joined Block as well, or Square as well, right? So in July 2022, I joined Square. Um, and the Android project, when I was one, when it was one of my first tasks actually uh, looking at it was uh, uh, counting how many modules we had. And at that point, we had 4,600 modules. Uh, we we're also starting to see that Android Studio was actually becoming uh, un unusable and almost unstable. Like, uh, what is it? Uh, code completion, um, uh, click through or command clicking of classes just wasn't quite working right. Uh, the same times were obviously getting worse and worse. Uh, so, we weren't tackling that yet. Actually, one of my first onboarding tasks was uh, was simple, right? We we're trying to go ahead and change uh, all the package names that were in the Android manifest and move them to namespace in the build.gradle. And that's kind of where the story uh, begins, right? So I'll just give you a little quick history of what happened before. And now we're in July of 2022. And after my change, we deal with, you know, problem number one is like the IDE is freezing, right? So it's like, okay, did I break something? What exactly happened, right? So I'm thinking like, you know, I'm new to the developer experience engineering team. I'm new to as as developer experience engineer, right? So I've, you know, I'm considering myself an Android engineer. And now I think I broke Android Studio for everybody. So I was like, okay, I'm going to panic. Um, so I start looking at, okay, well, what's going on, right? So the IDE is freezing. The code editor would also freeze. So as people are typing in their code, the cursor would actually stop working and it wouldn't type anything up for them for quite a few minutes, actually. Uh, basic IDE functionality was just becoming unusable at that point. And it got so bad, actually, that some of our developers started going to um, text editors, just basic text editors like VS Code. And they were using command line to go and actually build their app. So it was like, okay, well, they can't use the IDE, so what's going on here? Well, any solution that we did go ahead and uh, try to use had to have uh, AGP 7.3 uh, or later because, um, we like, you know, the later versions of Android Studio are going to require that. But the issue was that the namespace, uh, or not the namespace, the package name was being deprecated. So with the package name being deprecated, uh, we had to go and make that migration anyway. So we were trying, we were kind of stuck in this, in a rock and a hard place, right? We weren't sure where to go from here. So we decided to go ahead and say, well, first things first, let's figure out what exactly is going on. Obviously we saw some bugs about this in, uh, in your track and GitHub and everything. So we weren't sure like what exactly was going on. I mean, obviously a lot of people weren't dealing with this. We were given, we had like uh, uh, 4,600 modules at the time. So we started saying, okay, well, let's look at the IDE logs and figure out what's going on here. So we started inspecting IDE logs. We noticed there was a lot of warning messages popping up, a lot of it in regards to the package name failure. Um, and it was just flooding like everybody's uh, IDE or IDE logs. As we, and we started collecting ID logs from all our different developers. Like we basically made a workflow saying, hey, if you're seeing this issue, give us your ID log and we're going to investigate this issue and figure out what's going on. So we started collecting a lot of different ID logs from around the Android team. Um, and we found a related ticket and we asked Google about, okay, well, we see this related ticket about this issue, so what's going on? And that's when we realized that, uh, and when they told us too, that Android Studio wasn't quite ready for this namespace change. So even though a, even though Android Gator plugin was, Android Studio was not. So it's was like, okay, well, what do we do here? Um, and also I put up the uh, link as well as QR code since I forgot to put QR codes earlier. So I put them up uh, right for this uh, talk as well. So hopefully you guys go and uh, look at the QRs as they come up. Um, so obviously we ended up uh, looking at this. We're like, okay, well, what do we learn from you know, investigating some of these issues. We know that Android Studio is not ready, but we have AGP. So what do we do from here? Um, we realized that Android Gradle plugin and Gradle uh, are evolving independently. Android Studio code also, I mean, through our investigation, we found out that Android Studio code actually runs on the Gradle daemon as well. Um, and we maintained, uh, and like Gradle and Android Gradle plugin were actually being maintained separately by different organizations, obviously. Gradle, uh, maintains a great uh, Gradle source code, Android Gradle plugin is maintained by Android Studio or by the Android team, uh, well, Android Studio team, as well as Android Studio being its own repository. 
And on top of that, there's the Kotlin Gradle plugin and everything else. So there's a lot of different tools that are being involved independently of each other. Um, we realized that actually asking our engineers for uh, IDE logs immediately were uh, very helpful for that. Um, and it was kind of like our first foray, our first exposure into like really looking into the IDE and the different internal tools that are being used for, you know, building uh, JVM or Android apps. Um, so what we ended up doing was, you know, realizing that ADA, we weren't quite ready for this uh, namespace migration. We did a full rollback of everything. But unfortunately, that rollback didn't seem to help. Um, we found out that many of our developers, in an effort to go ahead and try to mitigate the issues they were running into, they actually went to the Canary version of Android Studio. So they're going to uh, the latest releases that were out there. Um, and that's kind of where we ended up running into our second problem, right? So now the second problem was the IDE wasn't syncing for anybody. It wasn't taking twice as long. It was taking forever to go and sync the IDE. Uh, was it somebody had actually reported to me that there were, it took them 16 hours to sync. And I was like, that's absolutely ridiculous. So what's going on? So uh, one of my coworkers actually, uh, Ray Ryan, he went ahead and like, he brought this up to me saying like, hey, Android Sync isn't working. Uh, so obviously we realized we have a sync issue now, but it wasn't occurring on uh, Android Studio Chipmunk or Dolphin, but it was happening on Electric Eel. And this is like where we start realizing Android Studio and Gradle or have a tight communication uh, with their code. So, uh, but at the time we didn't know what was going on. We're like, okay, why is uh, why is sync not working for one ID, but it is working for the other two? And why is there suddenly 60 gigabytes of memory being used up by the Gradle Daemon on Electric EO and not for Chipmunk or Dolphin? So we started looking into it. Um, and that was actually Tony Roblick who went ahead and did an investigation into that Gradle Daemon memory issue, because at first we thought it was Gradle. And uh, he went ahead and did a quick snaps out of it. Sent to PY, who PY is uh, the author of Leak Canary. He also works at uh, at Block. And PY, a funny story, was uh, he was actually coming back from a football game, I believe. And he was, you know, slightly inebriated. He's looking at the screens up on his phone. And he's like, you know, a great guy. He realizes, like, immediately, like, hey, there's this um, anonymous class that's having a circular reference that's going right back to uh, to uh, cause his memory leak, right? So the circular reference memory leak. And... We started looking at this, and as we're looking at it, we realized that the bug isn't even in Android Studio. The actual, the actual bug exists in the IntelliJ open source. So that's where we had our aha moment, realizing that, okay, well, the bug's in IntelliJ, but it's causing Gradle Daemon to go ahead and have this massive memory leak. So how do we go ahead and resolve this? Uh, so for one of the first things we ended up trying to do was uh, build Android Studio from source. And if you've never done that, it's uh, it's an adventure. So... Uh, we weren't able to actually go ahead and actually build it out. We tried. There's a lot of internal uh, APIs and tools and uh, uh, with their Bazel build as well. We weren't quite able to go and yeah, get there. But one of the great things was uh, Roger Hugh, uh, who worked at Square, he went ahead and did uh, what was called a bytecode patch of, uh, of the jar file that actually held the bug, uh, the memory leak bug. Um, so we went ahead and uh, did a bytecode patch using Recaf on that. And we were able to go and show that, okay, well, this, if we do a bytecode patch of the fix that PY had suggested to us, it worked perfectly. So now the question was, how do we get this out to all of the developers, right? So we're trying to figure out how to go and get this jar file uh, pushed out to our developers so that way they can start testing it. Um, well, they're doing that. I swap out from, uh, from doing a namespace migration and the uh, investigation there to just looking into this great old daemon memory issue. And I realized I could reproduce the issue in the IntelliJ open source as well. So I'm able to actually make the change on IntelliJ directly. And I was able to validate the fix uh, locally, which was perfect. So we uh, were able to go ahead and actually put out a PR for this and submit it to IntelliJ, uh, notified them that, hey, this is a big bug. It's a memory leak. We showed them the information and the data we had collected about that. And we also notified Google about this. And they went ahead and, uh, and they pushed out that PR as quickly as possible. Um, in order to describe the memory leak that we were having, um, as you can see here, the left side is obviously the for code, right side is uh, after code. So uh, what was going on here is this uh, thread factory that's being created on the left side was actually holding an anonymous reference to the project import action class above. Um, and our fix to go ahead and prevent that from happening was uh, actually just creating a static final class that didn't hold that reference to the project import action. Um, so go ahead and kind of go into more detail about why that anonymous uh, 
reference was causing uh, the memory leak. What was going on was, as you can see here, the uh, new single thread executor, which if you look at the previous slide, was what's uh, being used to go ahead and uh, create the uh, the different pro uh, or run this project import action, which by the way, this is the code that's in IntelliJ and this runs uh, in the Gradle daemon process too. So it's not running in the IntelliJ process, running the Gradle daemon process. Um, so the single thread executor is uh, is being created and it actually wraps the um, the thread factory that is being passed through in this finalizable uh, delegated executor service. And this service actually has a finalized method on it. And what was going on with this finalized method is um, it was holding on to uh, that reference to the project import action. And whenever the garbage collector actually comes down to go ahead and try to collect on it, it needs to run this finalized first. Well, the finalize isn't completing because uh, the shutdown for the executive service is still shutting down, but there's a lot of different tasks are being run in it. And because uh, this uh, this thread factory holds reference to the project import action, the project import action wasn't even uh, being uh, released from memory as well. So it was holding on to all the memory that it had because of the finalizer in the uh, executor thread because the thread factory had a reference to the project import action. So it was just creating a circular uh, reference and the only way that it would actually go away would be uh, once all the tasks were completed and the memory was released, but there was obviously garbage collection uh, was thrashing at that point too. So that, that was the reason why our sinks were taking forever. So September, 2022, we find out that this bug is, is occurring and it's going back to our timeline, right? Uh, and PY actually goes into depth about the, the memory leak itself. So there's a lot more detail than what I just provided here in regards to that talk. Um, uh, he wrote a great blog about it and actually, uh, goes into more detail about how to go ahead and do, um, uh, just memory profiling and just looking for memory leaks. Uh, Roger Hugh went ahead and, uh, shared his experience about bytecode patching, uh, the IDE with Recaf in, uh, this GitHub blog that he went out and wrote as well. So our lessons from, you know, this IDE or not IDE freeze, the IDE uh, sync issue was that. You know, heap thumps were essential. We were capturing heap thumps not only on the Gradle daemon process, also on the IDE process, trying to figure out what was going on there. Um, we found out that the IDE actually has direct effect on the Gradle memory usage. Um, and Android Studio wasn't easy to go and compile from uh, from source. Uh, IntelliJ is very easy. It's just a you know a simple clone. You go ahead and actually build it. It's pretty easy. With uh, Android Studio, there is the uh, there's a repo. Uh, um, command line you got to use and actually pulls in a, a lot of different re, uh, repositories. And then there's a Bazel uh, build system that it's using, which a lot of it is referencing to the uh, internal tools that we didn't have access to. Um, so it became more difficult with that. Um, we also learned that if we really needed to go ahead and make a fix in a pen, so we could use, uh, like I said, by, uh, recap for bytecode patching uh, jar files in either Android Studio, IntelliJ, or Gradle as, as needed, instead of recompiling everything from source. Um, so I want to go ahead and just give a quick shout out to Tony P.Y. and Roger because they were the ones that were driving this this uh, specific fix. I kind of came in and just did the uh, the PR for, as you can see right here from the QR code. So if you want to check it out and see the fix and how it works, so you guys go and actually investigate that a little bit further from there. Um, so, you know, we got, uh, our, we got our memory uh, leak fixed. So we're thinking, okay, everything's good to go. Uh, electric EO should be fine. This this me this memory leak, keep in mind, was an electric EO, and we reverted the namespace changes, but we're still seeing these IDE freezes happening on electric EO. So now it's like, okay, we're back to kind of problem number one, but it's really problem number three, right? So wh what exactly is going on? Why are we seeing this IDE freeze? So we go ahead and do a little bit more debugging, right? We have more uh, more knowledge and more skills in regards to like how to debug the IDE, how to debug Gradle. So we start looking into like, okay, well, what's going on? So we look at the logs. We don't see anything immediately in the IDE logs. So we decide to go and have a deeper look. And it's like, okay, well, we start asking the question, well, what if we could debug the uh, IDEs directly? Like not recompile them and uh, debug them, but actually attach the debugger to Android Studio, IntelliJ, or Gradle, right? So we found out that, I mean, obviously Android Studio, as I said before, was not easy to compile, but we wanted to go ahead and still debug that. Um, the IntelliJ could be uh, compiled, but wasn't easy to debug. Um, but And also didn't have everything that Android Studio had. So obviously there was some nuances there where if we want to find issues in Android Studio, we could use uh, IntelliJ up to an extent. Um, 
And we also found out, obviously, like I was said earlier, was uh, the IDE code doesn't run an IDE process. Not all of it. Some of it actually runs on a Gradle daemon process. So now we attach a debugger to the Gradle daemon. And how do we have a, how do we go ahead and put that into uh, the IDE and actually add breakpoints to the IDE source code? So it's like, okay, we need to go and figure out how to do this. And luckily, we you know we figured it out. It was one of the things that I when I took a deep dive into. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick talk about how we attach the debugger for IDE code on a Gradle daemon, right? So one of the first things you want to go ahead and do, I and mean, this is gonna be a quick, pretty quick, is uh, you want to go and uh, figure out like what version of IntelliJ you want to go and debug, right? So you look at the build number for it, and the great thing about IntelliJ is that it actually gives you the tags for the build numbers you're looking for. So you just go ahead and um, open up the IntelliJ version you want, go to the tag, and just pull the uh, just clone the repository and pull that uh, tag. Um, it's a little bit more nuanced with uh, Android Studio since Android Studio, a, you're pulling in both, uh, you're pulling in AGP, you're pulling in IntelliJ code for whatever base they're using and a few other tools with it. So uh, instead of going through, you know, how to go ahead and pull Android Studio code, I left you the QR code and how we ended up doing it from here. Um, so you want to go and make sure that the, it's important to get the right version too, because if you don't have the right version, the breakpoints, especially if you start adding uh, breakpoints to the code, isn't going to quite match um, for the bytecode and everything. Um, obviously, once you go ahead and you get your project and uh, your uh, everything's go, uh, good to go. Don't compile the IntelliJ. You don't need to uh, compile IntelliJ or Android Studio. What you want to do is you want to add a configuration to it. Um, the, config the configuration you want to add is called a remote JVM debug. So when you go ahead and add this, um, go ahead and name it, and you're gonna go and it's gonna automatically prefill the command line arguments for it. The address you can modify uh, both here as well as the Gradle debugger. But in this case, you just need, uh, you can leave it alone. Uh, we left it at 5,005, that's the default for it. Um, but when we're debugging both the IDE and Gradle at the same time, uh, we ended up having two debuggers on this. So we ended up using the two different addresses for it. Um, and from there, once you go ahead and actually have your debugger configuration set and everything's good to go, you wanna go ahead and start your Gradle task uh, using the debug flags enabled. And if you don't know how to go and enable debug flags on Gradle, um, I put up the link on here to go and actually show you. It's just, it's literally a, a command line. Uh, you just pass through, it's just uh, org.gradle debug. You also set this on gradle.properties. And there's more information about debugging uh, Gradle daemon on here as well. And this is just mostly about creating a debugger Gradle that you can attach a debugger to. So once you do that, um, you go ahead and uh, it's going to wait for you to go ahead and attach the debugger on your IntelliJ IDE. Go ahead and click on attach debug on your remote JVM uh, debug configuration. And that's it. You go and uh, as, as you're running through your Gradle builds or Gradle task and you start uh, adding in your breakpoints, you're going to go ahead and see the, um, the uh, IDE start hitting these breakpoints as neat or the, not that, well, the IDE is going to hit the breakpoints. You're going to see the, the IDE hit the breakpoints because of Gradle from there. Um, it's not obviously going to hit everything because not everything runs on Gradle. The ID does split up a little bit there. Um, but that's, you know, that's how to go ahead and debug IntelliJ or Android Studio from Gradle. But if you want to debug the actual IDE process, IntelliJ is pretty straightforward. Just literally build it from source. Android Studio is a little bit more difficult. And instead of going through the whole walkthrough, I decided to go and put it up here because honestly, it's a lot more involved to go ahead and debug Android Studio than it is uh, the Android Studio process that it is to go ahead and attach the Android Studio process to Gradle. Um, so going back to our problem, right? So back to uh, debugging uh, problem number three, which is, you know, IDE is freezy. So we went ahead and uh, attached breakpoints, and we noticed that there was this uh, breakpoint that was being hit repeatedly over and over again several hundred thousand times. We're like, okay, well, what's going on here? Um, and what was, what was happening was that uh, the... This, uh, this part of the code was basically iterating through all 4,600 of our modules hundreds of times every second and every time someone was typing in their code. So we weren't sure exactly what to do here. Um, we went ahead and dug a little bit deeper and realized, okay, let's well, with Project Facet Manager. So we got that far, but then it's, you know, it kind of became a fix that was beyond my capabilities. I'm an Android developer, not an IDE developer. So I did the best thing that any engineer would do. I found a bug. 
Um, and here's the bug, by the way. So if you guys want to go and look at the bug that we ended up filing for this. So we filed the bug, let, uh, let our partners at Google and uh, IntelliJ know like, hey, we're seeing this issue. And I went ahead and followed along with their fixes and uh, just looking at what they did. And what they ended up doing was they added this caching layer uh, that mapped the package names to the, what was called Android facets. And I'm probably going to get this wrong, but the Android facets are what go ahead and uh, display the uh, the icons and basically show the uh, tell the ID like, hey, this is a, an Android app. This is an Android library. This is a JVM library. So that's what the Android facets sort of describe for the IDE. It's more over, overly simplist, uh, simplistic, um, but it gives you that. Um, and it was preventing the allocation of all these arrays. So what was going on is, is it was iterating through all these modules and all these uh, 100 times a second. It was actually creating arrays over and over and over again. Uh, and just it, it just got stuck in the CPU cycle where it just never went anywhere. So this caching mechanism went ahead and actually um, prevented most of that. And what we ended up seeing was that uh, it didn't just improve the IDE experience where we actually able to start typing code in and actually using basic IDE functionality. It actually improved everything. Like we saw the sync time go from almost eight minutes with Bumblebee, Chipmunk, and Dolphin to almost less than four minutes with Electric Eel and Flamingo. And I mean, at the time, uh, Electric Eel was actually a release candidate and Flamingo, I believe, was going to Canary. But we were seeing these huge improvements on it. And we were completely amazed by it. And I mean, like uh, a lot of our developers internally were basically saying like, hey, this like, we've never seen uh, the IDE work this efficiently. And so it had only been there for a year or two and they'd been dealing with this issue for a long time. Um, and just, you know, as a, as a quick thank you to Ivan Gaverlock and uh, Javier uh, Ducroje uh, and the rest of the Android team for really helping us out with getting this issue resolved because it, it was literally stopping us from... Uh, from developing quickly and you know our experience wasn't quite there with uh with the id at the time and by this fix they absolutely uh uh helped us out with that so and this is all with electric eel right so we're still in electric eel uh the fix actually they ended up putting in for both the memory leak as well as this android facet change um happened kind of late in the release cycle um but they saw the impact that it was having on us before and after so they actually went ahead and pushed it uh, and through that, we ended up, uh, you know, sharing this, uh, this huge change with all of you. Um, and you can go and see the different blogs that we ended up writing together. Uh, top ones, uh, from Square, bottom ones from, uh, Grado, last ones from Android, just basically talking about this huge release that we ended up, uh, working together on. Um, uh, and really like, you know, like I said, most of this isn't quite talking about how to debug IDE or anything like that. It's more of like our lessons on it, right? And the reasons why I want to go and have these lessons is to impart it on you guys to go and say like, okay, well, we found a, we found out how to go and debug uh, the IDE in Gradle. We found out how to go and do certain things on here. Um, we learned a few things along the way, but it's really, it's to go ahead and sort of say that the IDE source code, uh, Gradle source code, Android Studio source code might seem foreign to many of us. We don't really quite work in it on a daily basis, but it's not impossible to work in. You can go ahead and dig deep into the IDE logs and say, okay, well, this is a weird issue, but who really owns it? And you go and actually, because the, big, the biggest issue is uh, many of us will go ahead and see a Gradle issue and we'll file it with Gradle and we'll say, hey, Gradle, here's a bug that we found, but it's not a Gradle bug. It could be a bug with IntelliJ. It could be a bug with uh, Kotlin. It could be a bug with uh, Android Studio. Or it could be, you know, vice versa. It could be an Android Studio that we're thinking has having the issue, but really it's IntelliJ. So it's one of those things where the lesson I want to go ahead and sort of impart for everybody is look at the different bugs and sort of uh, make better reports. Look, don't be afraid to dig into the IDE. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to go ahead and say like, well, what's going on here? How do I want to fix this? Because um, really like all of us as uh, engineers, we're working with the IDE directly. And if that's not working for us, then it doesn't matter how great our build system looks. We can't make code. We can't we can't go ahead and produce the, um, the products that we're building out. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave it up open for questions. I know that was kind of...